Hello friends. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I'd give you guys a tutorial video on how to make videos because I get asked a lot um, how I make videos, what I use to record, what I use to edit, um, how I do stuff in Dota 2. So um, <clears throat> what I thought I'd do is I'd give you guys a little bit of a tutorial on how I make videos and maybe that will help you. Um, I should probably put a disclaimer at this point that I have no formal education in editing and whatnot, so I'm self-taught, so if you, if you find yourself asking why I do something in a stupid way, it's probably because I'm just an idiot. But um, with that out of the way, um, oh, I should also probably say that I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere to edit. Some people like to use um, Sony Vegas to edit, but I use Adobe Premiere, so if you like Vegas then sorry but the editing portion of this video is not going to be interesting for you um, also if you don't have uh, Adobe Premiere you're going to need to get Adobe Premiere so if you don't have that feel free to pause the video now and resume once you have it ever since pirates from all over the world set sail for the Grand Line searching for one piece the treasure that would make their dreams come true okay now that we've got that out of the way um, we can talk about what to use to record footage um, I think there's two good choices for recording footage. Um, if you don't want to spend any money, you can use uh, OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, which is actually a streaming software, but you can also use it to record relatively high quality video, which is actually what I'm using to record this right now, as you can see. Um, the main plus about OBS is that it's free, you don't have to pay a dime. Um, also the file sizes are generally smaller. Um, you should be careful that if you're using OBS to stream, you should use two different profiles um, because the best settings for recording is not the best settings for streaming, so you don't want to get those two mixed up. So um, we can go into our settings here and see what I have. Um, I pretty much just copy pasted this out of something on the internet, so feel free to just Google for yourself um, best recording settings for OBS. But um, I have these settings here. I have under advanced are some more settings you should check out and under video you want to make sure it says 1920 by 1080 and I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you don't want to use OBS and you want to get something a little bit fancier you can use Dick Story, which is a software which lets you record. It costs about 20 bucks. Um, I think this is what the, uh, the fancy people on YouTube use to record. And it is just a recording software, not a streaming software. Um, I believe this is what Total Biscuit uses, and he seems to have his shit together, so I can definitely vouch for this. Um, important only here is that you get the right codec. Um, I'm using this UT Video YUV420 Blazit BT709 VCM codec, um, which you can download the codec for free, but uh, this software itself costs um, costs like 20 bucks. So now that we're all set to record, um, we should first do some stuff to modify our Dota 2 files so that we can actually like do basic stuff like remove the interface in Dota 2 because Dota 2 doesn't come with some sort of functionality so we have to do it ourselves. So uh, what you're going to do first is navigate to your Steam folder which is usually going to be in like C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Dota 2 Beta, Dota slash CFG and you should have a file here called autoexec.cfg if you don't have it just create it and open it in Notepad and here I got some crap in here already pretty much copy pasted from Cyborg Matt and tweaked a little bit um, this I'm gonna have in the description of this video uh, a paste bin or something <clears throat> and you can just uh, copy paste uh, that information in here save it as autoexec.cfg and I'll also have another um, file this file um, which I just have some random console commands that are helpful. Um, you don't need to put this file anywhere in particular. You just gotta have it handy because um, we're gonna be typing that into the uh, console of the game. And also you're gonna wanna go to your library, uh, right click on Dota 2, hit properties, 
hit uh, set launch options. Um, I have no vid in here to and disable the annoying intro that Dota 2 has. And you can also enable the console by typing in plus con underscore enable space one. And that's going to let you use the console. So now we've got all that out of the way, we can now finally launch Dota 2 and get ready to record some stuff. So I'm going to be using a replay that I have saved from one of my games where some funny stuff happened. Um, as a little tip, whenever something funny happens in your game and you think that you want to make a video out of that, even if you're not sure if you're going to end up doing it, you should always download the replay immediately because they expire in like, I think, two weeks or something. So it's good to uh, save those. Now we're just going to skip ahead here. And before we record the actual part that we were going to record, I want to talk about some of the features of the text files. So I'm going to turn down the master volume a little bit, so hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, you should be able to open up the console now. Um, you can bind that to a key in the options now, and it should pop up. So with the text file as your auto exec, you can now type stuff in like UE underscore none, which will echo back disabling interface, and now the interface is gone. You can also type in UE full, and it will be back. Um, I have in the specific things that I've uploaded, I've also um, bound this to a button on the keypad, zero and comma, or minus, I believe, I don't know. I'm using a German keyboard, so I can just press these buttons on my keyboard and do this, which is very nice. Um, also, there is a Dota free camera option in Dota 2 now, which I also have bound a uh, key on my keyboard, which you guys can, you can edit the file that I've uploaded to bind it to whatever you want. In my case, it's like a, it's like the little dash thing next to enter. Um, oh wait, no, it's not. It is this little dash thing. Um, and this will give you a free camera. You can also, I believe, do this with Dota Free Camera Zero, I think. To, no, maybe, okay, I don't know. It's in the options, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm using the, the hotkey to do it. Um, but yeah, so with a press of a button, you can go into Free Camera Mode, and then you can also remove the interface the same way that you did before. Um, there's also another, dis uh, another feature is removing some of the fog. So I actually have a preset for this. I don't have a bound to a button, but I just type in fog off, and it will echo back fuck fog, which will pretty much disable the uh, fog. But now you see there's that annoying um, blue wall, because that's the render distance of the game. But you can also bypass that with uh, the preset that I have here called distance, which lets you see forever. So now you can pretty much see everything. You'll notice your frame rate's kind of kind of going to go to shit. Some things are still going to be weird. You'll see you get these weird warning messages. But, <coughs> excuse me, you usually don't need to, to take such like big shots like this. But um, just as a, a thing that you can do, and you'll notice sometimes the hotkeys stop working. So I'm going to have to type in UE full again into the console and disable that. So that's some of the tricks um, you can do. Um, another thing you can do is you can click on um, the uh, the showcase mode. Um, this mode is basically just fixes your camera to uh, a specific hero. Um, you're kind of limited to what you can do. You'll notice the fog is back and the render distance is back. That's because this showcase view just kind of like, it's like a preset. You can't change it. Um, although, although I kind of hate this, this uh, showcase mode because you, you can't really customize it. I do end up using it a lot just because it's very convenient and you do get a pretty nice clean little shot of the hero but as you can see the fog is just super thick in this mode and as far as I know there's no way to change that maybe I'm wrong but I don't think so um, and then finally there are some uh, additional things you can do um, here in this um, in this uh, free camera mode so if you open up the console file um, you'll see some stuff like free camera XL5 and free camera max speed, free camera fog and so this is basically lets you um, customize some 
parameters of what you do in this. So I guess if you change this to like one, you get a really smooth, smooth movement of the camera. Um, there's you can play around with the with the other commands in here. Basically, you can pretty much do anything. It all boils down to like the acceleration of the camera, the speed of the camera. Um, I believe you can also change the mouse rotation speeds. Um, so this is not entirely useless because you can get some really sort of smooth shots. I mean, if you're just going to be doing a Dota playthrough video, um, you're not going to need any of this. But if you ever want to do something artsy, you can. It's nice to have this free camera options to do, um, you know, some of the some of the nicer stuff. So what we're going to be doing here today, though, is we're not going to be using too much of that. Um, we are going to be recording a scene that takes place at Roshan. I'm going to have to open up my files here. So this is the scene that we're going to be using today. Um, in this scene, my good friend Sly is going to be um, killing Roshan, or so he thinks. And his animation is kind of bugging out, which is another thing you get to have to get used to when you're using Dota 2 to make videos. Um, but then right as he's about to kill Roche, oh man, Naga Siren comes in. And he does get Roche, but then Naga Siren's gonna get the Aegis, but oh, I fly in, I steal the Aegis! So, um, that's pretty much the entirety of this clip. And I think we end up wiping them. Yeah, we end up kicking their ass. So, um, that was kind of a funny clip, I thought. And so, I thought now we can make a clip out of this funny little video. So when you're making a video you want to like kind of make a storyboard in your head because you're gonna be recording different scenes different perspectives and you don't want to record more than once you want to get all your recording done in one sitting because it's gonna save you time and nothing makes me angrier than when I'm sitting in Adobe Premiere and I want to edit and then I realize that I need another shot so I gotta close Adobe Premiere, open up Dota 2, open up the replay, find the time, find the place, find the shot, record it all and it's just, it just wastes time. So in this time we're gonna figure out what shots we're gonna want and then we're gonna record them. So we have me flying in a storm stealing the Aegis so we're definitely gonna want a uh, locked camera shot on storm uh, we have Naga walking into the situation with her ult, which we're going to want to record for like exposition. Um, then we should probably have just like a, a general shot of this area, just to make it um, a little bit easier for the viewer to like understand what's going on. And once we have all those shots, we also want to maybe have a shot of Storm getting the Aegis like as a notification. So if you scroll back and hit play, and when I get the Aegis, you'll see there's a notification here, me getting the Aegis. So it would be nice if we could get that into the video. So, so that's how many shots is that? So we got one shot of Naga, one shot of me, one shot of the area, maybe one shot of Sly, and then one shot with the interface on so we can get um, that... Um, the notification and then maybe we can get like another shot of the Roshan pit just like right as I uh, I snatch the Aegis and uh, that should be enough uh, in general you want to record more more scenes than you need than too little because it always helps to have like extra footage around so I think this would be a good shot here with the interface off and I just love how I just stand here because I'm, I'm immediately affected by Song of the Siren but I still managed to pick up the Aegis so, you know, that's kind of the joke we're going for. We might 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 want to, you know, have the my inventory. It's another thing we could Photoshop in here or uh, edit in cuz I have the there's a free space here and then right as Naga comes in I just I just snatched that. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to record this all in Dick's story and then we're going to go to the editing portion. Alright, now that we've got all our footage, we're going to open up Premiere, and this is where the magic happens. So, we're going to create a new project, we're going to name it whatever you want, hilarious video. And then it's going to ask you what sequence settings you want. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new secret, 
uh, sequence preset. So we're going to go to settings, mode, custom, and you're pretty much going to fill this out. 60 frames per second, 920 by 1080, square pixels, no fields, 60 FPS time code, audio is whatever, video preview is whatever. And that's pretty much it. And then you can save the preset as hilarious preset. Always use this. And then uh, you got your hilarious preset. And you're just going to double click that. And this is just going to set you off with your normal sequence settings. So now you're going to be confronted with a whole bunch of shit. So now you have, down here, you have your timeline. This is where you're going to be putting all your clips, mashing them together. Here you've got your preview window, effect controls. This is where you do like actual editing and stuff. And then here down here we have um, effects and here's your project stuff. So right now we have nothing except the sequence. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our videos here and I'm gonna take all the stuff I just recorded, just all this stuff, drag it in here. And it's going to import all that good stuff. And then we're just going to we're going to take them one by one. And there we go. So we have a clip of me, a storm. This is the first clip I recorded. Um, this is just me walking. And if it stutters a little bit, it's because these video previews, um, you know, they take a while to load. So. So there's that shot, and then we've got uh, the shot of Naga Siren walking in here, shooting her pants, and then we've got a shot of the area. I used uh, the Dota Free camera setting to get this shot, just just as a general like clusterfuck. Um, then we've got close up of situation as it unfolds in the Roche pit and then finally I have just a shot of just of the items in my inventory with the interface on and this um, portion of me picking up the Aegis so together with this we're gonna make some some sort of funny video happen so the first thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about is just generally how to um, edit stuff basically on a basic level. So we're going to click on this clip and I'm just going to go through this. Uh, if you go to your effect controls here, you're going to see under video effects a couple things like motion, opacity, and some other crap. So in the motion tab, this is where most of the interesting stuff happens in videos. So we have scale, which lets us zoom in the video zoom out the video like so. Uh, we have position that lets us move the video to the right, to the left, up and down. Um, we have rotation, lets us rotate the video. <clears throat> and we have opacity which lets us make the video invisible or visible. And if you want to revert all your changes, all you have to do is click on the reset button and it will bring it all back to normal. So if you, for example, change any parameter like the uh, scale and I zoom in, then it's going to be scaled in for the whole time. If you change the position, it's going to be like this the whole time. So assuming that's not what we want, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to click on these um, these little animation clocks. If you guys are hearing annoying noises in the background, it's because my guinea pigs will not stop fucking making noise in the background. Excuse me. Okay, so now we've clicked these um, these little toggle animation buttons, and you'll notice now that there's these little things here called keyframes, uh, which basically means that at this point in time in this keyframe stuff should be at this level, which it already is, because there's no other keyframes and that's just the way it is. So if we were to make, if we were to go here and make more keyframes, which you can do by clicking here and here, now we have a keyframe at the beginning of the clip and somewhere in the clip. 
So if I were to go to this keyframe using these arrow keys, preferably, and then zooming in, now if we go back to the beginning, it's not zoomed in because it's going to change over the course from one keyframe to another. And this simple principle also works for everything else. So if I go like this, then it's going to start normal, and then it's going to get really fucking weird. And then if I want to change that back, I make another keyframe, and then, you know, make this to like 100 again, and then I drag this back to whatever the hell it was. And then it's normal again. So then this is pretty much how you you edit it's pretty much it so I'm going to delete these keyframes and the same thing can be for opacity so um, if we want the video to fade in we make a toggle the animation for opacity find the point where we want the video to be you know faded in like here make another keyframe so now it's at 100 like it was and then we go back to the beginning and we just type in 0 hit enter and now it's going to fade in like that same thing goes for fading out. You can also change the volume the same way here. Um, you can mute the audio. You can do all that good stuff. So um, <clears throat> for this clip, I figured since it's a funny clip, we can get some funny music. So I got some Mario Party music, which I'm quite fond of. So you can listen to that. So you notice the music is pretty goddamn loud, and usually it is. So also, if you click on um, this tracks little expander thing, you can see the waveform of the audio, which I find to be helpful sometimes. So if you click on this audio, like everything, it has its own effect controls. So for volume, we could. Um, I'm gonna uncheck the the animation thing because I don't. I don't want the. I just want this to be quieter. I don't want it to be quieter at a specific point. So I'm going to uncheck this, just because it bothers me otherwise, because I'm making keyframes. I don't know why, it just triggers me. And I'll bring this down to like minus 12. Let's listen to that now, see if that's still really ear-shatteringly loud. So that sounds better. So um, we're going to want to put that in the beginning of the video. So also, if you press the minus button on your keyboard when you're in the timeline, you can zoom out. The plus button zooms in. This is very helpful. So I'm going to zoom out now, drag this to the beginning of the video, and then zoom back in. And now for this, I'm going to move this to the beginning. And you can see we already have sort of the beginning of our video. Okay, so um, I found that the golden rule of making videos is kind of, you know, keep it short. People don't want to watch your fucking 10 minute team fight. So I already find this to be a pretty slow start, but um, I guess we can open up with Storm walking this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to stop the clip right here and go right to the Naga clip. So how do we do that? So we click on the clip, and then here we just click and drag the ending to the uh, playhead. And then we look here, we got the Naga clip. Um, we drag this over here. I got Naga coming in. You notice I hit record and then I realized that I wanted to zoom out more. So I should probably not use the, any point before this. So I'm going to drag that back as well. Okay, so now we're going to move this back. So now it's going to look something like this. And now that we've seen this, uh, the viewer is probably asking himself what's going on in the Roche pit. So we're gonna we're gonna use this clip now. And maybe what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on this on this event. So we're gonna zoom in on scale. We're gonna move this over here, up here, and now the viewer can see that uh, Sly is killing Roche as Naga's coming in and it immediately gets slept 
All right, we're gonna cut this off because now I'm flying in already, but we don't really want that already. Because we want it to seem like it's it's really close. So right is this right about this frame? I think we've had enough of that. So let's, let's look at what we got so far again. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, now we're gonna want. We're gonna to want to use uh, the same footage that we had here in the beginning. So that was this file. I'm gonna drag this back out. And now we're gonna look ahead here. So this is the part where I jump in. So maybe we'll skip everything before that. Move this in here. And maybe now is a good time we can save our file and let's add some text maybe people like text so uh, sorry I went through that a little bit fast uh, hit title new title default still you can name this text anything you want I usually don't name it because I'm lazy as shit and um, click here and we can say maybe you know just some funny text and um, you know make that make that comic sans because why the fuck not right and then what we can do is we can here you can select the um, the font um, you can add outlines so I like to do outer strokes drag that up to like maybe not 50 maybe like 30 I'll give it a little bit of an outline and um, there's a couple things you can do here you can actually make text like really fancy with all these stupid presets but um I don't usually do this, but you can add like gradients and all this kind of fancy stuff. <clears throat> Pretend like you're Barry from Game Grumps. But uh, we're gonna go with the good old fashioned white comic sans. And now that we have this uh, text file here, we can um, drag it over the video. Um, you can also double click on the text file, and now you can still edit it. So this is like the source of the text file. So what I actually want to do here is um, I want to center this because once it's centered, it's easier to deal with later. So we're going to click here, center, vertical center, horizontal center. The reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to want to rotate this maybe. And um, you'll see now when you rotate it, it's what you would expect. But um, if actually, if you were to move this text out here, then the anchor point is still in the middle and um, rotating it is going to look really wonky so that's why I pretty much center all my text um, I'm going to put it like <clears throat> here rotate it a little bit and uh, we're only going to want this to show up for like a few seconds so once we get to this shot it's going to go to this shot and then like right about now I think that's a good duration. Shorten it down. See what, see how that looks. Okay, so that looks okay. And now that I'm flying in, maybe stop the clip right about here. Zoom out, and then we got. Um, I think we're gonna save this clip for last. So what we're, what we're gonna want is we're gonna want we're gonna want this clip again. So I can actually just Control C. Control V this clip back in. So I, I kind of want to use the same camera angle that I did before, but now we're going to extend the clip uh, to see like what happened. And then um, we're going to take out this part because we already saw that. Okay. <clears throat> so now I jump in here. And um, that's already pretty hilarious. But what we're going to want to do is like right at the moment where I pick up the Aegis I fall asleep which I think is kind of funny so maybe at this point we can zoom in on Storm so I don't want it to be a like a zoom in over time I want it to happen instantly so what we can do to do that is we can zoom in on this clip right at this time I think this is a good time and uh, here we have some tools I'm gonna use the razor tool to uh, cut this which makes it two clips now so now if I change the uh, scale and position 
it's not going to impact the um, it's not going to change the clip before it so it's just going to abruptly get to this sort of funny shot so that looks pretty good so we're going to zoom out I'm going to bring this back around so let's look at the whole thing again Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, I feel like the sound in game is kind of not audible. It might just be on my end, but maybe we'll bring the sound up to like six on this clip. Uh, it can, and once you've once you've added the sound here to six, you can just click on volume here, Control C, and then highlight all these other clips, Control V. And so maybe now this will be a little bit louder. Okay, so that's a little bit easier to hear now. And uh, now what we want to do is we are going to want to add that the footage of me picking up the Aegis. So we're going to take this clip. We're going to find this is where it happens. So we're going to zoom in again. So this is when the, the thing pops out, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to cut all the crap before this. And now, zoom in, and now we're going to go to effects, or this tab, video effects, and here you have a whole bunch of effects that you can do to modify your footage. So in this case, we're not going to, we're not going to do something cool like add, let's say, posterization, which, you know, if you're making like an MLG montage, maybe you can do some crazy crap like this, but that's not what we're going for here. We're just going to try and cut this out. So for cutting stuff out, you want to go to the keying area. And we're pretty much only going to need a four point garbage mat. And man, I probably butchered the pronunciation on that. But um, fuck it. For me, it's a four point garbage mat. French people can go to hell. All right, so I'm going to click that, drag it onto this clip. And now, in addition to all the other stuff you normally see, we have this. And what this does is, you'll notice there's these four points on the video. If I click and move these, it's going to basically cut this out. So that's what we're going to want, more or less. And thankfully, this is just a rectangular shape. So we're only going to need four points to do this. You can use an 8 or a 16 point mat, or you can use um, some other fancy stuff to like cut stuff out. But I think for this purpose, this is going to be just fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the first point down here. I'm going to move the bottom uh, right point to here. And you notice now we're getting kind of finicky. So we're going to want to click here, click 400. It's going to make this a lot easier. Okay, so I actually notice how there's a small gap here technically. We can actually get rid of this gap as well. Okay, so now we just want to make sure that um, bottom right portion and the top right portion are the exact same. So that looks pretty good. And that's not going to change. So at this point, at this point in time, we actually don't need anything, so we're going to cut that out. And right when we get to this frame, we're going to want to have just just this. So I'm going to go back here, drag this point down, drag this point up. And now we can go to bottom right. No, sorry, bottom left. So we're going to want this to be on the same level as bottom right in terms of y-axis. Move this down to here. We're going to want the uh, top left to be here as well. But we're going to want that to be same as this. All right, so take a look at that. 
That looks pretty good. Um, I don't think too many people are going to complain. Maybe maybe go one pixel deeper here. So that's the top left. So we want the bottom left to be like that. Maybe cut out a little bit more here. It might have been too much. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. All right. So that looks pretty good. And now it's going to pop out. So what we could do is we could do every frame of this, make it look um, the way it should in every frame. But we can actually just try and do this via keyframe. So let's find the point where it ends, which is here. At this point, it doesn't get any bigger. So at this point, we're going to want to make a keyframe for the top left and the bottom left. Because these are the only points that move, the ones that move to the left here. The, these points here, they stay the same. So now we have two keyframes here. We're going to go back to the very beginning and make two more keyframes. And um, we actually have one frame too many. Two frames too many. Okay. So we're going to cut those frames out. And actually, i got to remove those keyframes. Sorry about that. Go to the very beginning. Get two keyframes. All right, and now we're good. And now, we're going to go to the ending. So at the beginning, it's like this. And at the ending, it's still like this, which is what we don't want. So now we can just move this frame, this point, to about here. And then this one should also be there. So that looks pretty good. So let's see how this looks. That looks pretty damn perfect. It's a little bit, it's a little bit out of sync right here. Um, since it's since it's only out of sync in this frame, um, I am going to just do this frame customly. So maybe. Move this down, move this down. And you notice I didn't make a new keyframe. Um, it does this automatically though. So you'll see here, now that I've changed stuff here, it's automatically gonna make a keyframe. And yeah, you can hit plus and minus to zoom in and out of this as well. So let's see if this looks any better. Okay, honestly, I think it looked better without the keyframe, so I'm going to take that out, and uh, hopefully nobody will notice um, that one frame of extra shit. Um, if you wanted to do this nicely, you would just have to do every frame, which wouldn't really take that much time, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I think this is going to be fine. Um, as you can see, this is quite fast, and nobody's going to notice that one frame of shit flying out. So we actually have an audio track linked to this, um, piece of footage. And by the way, if you want to um, not see the the mask here, you can click on this FX toggle effect and it will pretend like this effect is not in effect. Um, so what we're going to want to do is, we don't want the audio that's linked to this clip. So we're going to right click, unlink, we're just going to unlink the audio to the video, click the video track, uh, sorry, the audio track, hit delete. So now there's no audio to this. Now we're going to put this up, up a layer, and then this is the part where we want this to be shown, right? So we're going to move this over this, and now we're going to reach, reapply this. So now we already have this showing, which is tiny. So we're going to click on the motion here, we're going to drag this out. It's not going to mess with the... Um, it's not going to mess with the overall effect of the cutting out of the stuff. Position it correctly and look at it again. Okay. So maybe we want to have this actually. bit earlier. 
Okay, uh, I was thinking about photoshopping in or you know editing in the inventory, but I feel like this is already pretty self-explanatory. So I guess we're not gonna do that. Maybe uh, maybe we can slap in a nice little reaction gif at this point in time. So now we can take a hilarious fucking image, fucking put it wherever, make it a bit bigger. And yeah, this is just a fucking example. God knows I God knows I would be above using such uh, cliche reaction images in such a video. I, I'm better than that, guys. But I'm just gonna show you because I know you guys are gonna be you know pleb shit tier. So you know. So we got that, and then maybe, um, we're going to want the, um, the one shot of the area that we hadn't had, so, right about here where shit hits the fan, we're going to take it and move it over, just to sort of, you know, let the viewer know that we, <coughs> let the viewer know that we ended up winning the team fight, if there was any doubt. So you notice that this clip is pretty goddamn long. And so everything we've had up to here, it's been about 15 seconds, which is a nice amount of time. But that this this cleaning up portion is fat, is really slow, so we want to speed this up a bit. So if you right click on this clip, you can hit speed duration. And we'll try it about, let's try 250 250% speed. Let's see how that looks. So that looks pretty good. Maybe we maybe we will start this off a little bit earlier though. And then you know, end it on a good note. Be like, fucking. Why not? Or you know what? It's actually probably funnier if we say we lost the game, or we still lost, because that's probably what happened in that game. I'm not even gonna open up the fucking replay. I'm just gonna assume that we lost. So let's take a look at the whole thing one more time, and of course end the music at this point. Alright, so let's assume that our standards are so low that that was acceptable. And what we're going to do now is we're going to render this pile of shit. So this part's actually kind of important. So we're going to drag this thing to the end of the video because we only want to render the actual video and not a whole bunch of black space afterwards. So I'm going to hit File, we're going to hit Export, we're going to hit Media. And then you're not going to want to render an AVI, you're going to want to render in H.264 is mp4 format and then you've got a whole bunch of shit here um, what you're gonna want to do is press Y on your keyboard go to YouTube uh, 1080p 29.97 this isn't the preset that we're gonna use but um, once you're here you can edit all this crap to what I have which is another preset which is 920 by 1080 um, frame rate 60 when you try and hit 60 you're gonna get an error because you have to scroll down set the level to 4.2 and then you can scroll back up frame rate to 60 square pixels NTSC profile high level 4.2 don't check this uh, VBR I use this um, this might make it take forever I think you can maybe change this, but I don't know. This is what I use: VBR two pass, eighteen uh, on both of these. 
keyframe distance to 90. That's what I use, and this is gonna give you 1080p 60 frames per second on YouTube, which, you know, depending if your footage is actually 60 frames per second, uh, may or may not help you, but um, hey, even if you're recording at 30 frames per second, at least those hilarious text images and all that shit that you're gonna add can be in glorious 60 frames per second, right? So, um, output name, we're gonna, we're gonna name this shit. <laughs> Apparently I already have a shit dot. Okay, but we don't have a shit dot mp4, so that's so what we're gonna name this. And um, we're gonna hit export, and I will see you guys in 20 years when this shit finishes. Alright boys, and then once you've got that, it's time to reap what you've sown. So uh, let's take a look at the finished product.